Hello, what's up guys? Welcome back to Take On Tottenham. My name is Ben and this is my Take On Tottenham. And where where do we go from here? Honestly, like, I, I'm really, really starting to just not care anymore. And it really hurts to say that because it's, you know, I, I despite what they put me through, um, you know, I love my club like, and you know, any other fan loves their club, but this is just now becoming difficult to watch. Um, I don't know what else to say. It's it's just it's just tragic, um, and it's it's just starting to get to the point where I'm just not I'm not even surprised. I said it a couple of videos ago that I'm not even um, I'm not even getting like mad or angry at these things anymore. I can rant about them, but I'm not like I'm they're not shocking anymore. You kind of starting to expect mistakes every game and starting to expect negative football and, and it's just it just kind of wears off after some time but I'll, I'll get into my big rant towards the end of the video but let's just get into it so um yeah Eric Dyer's back on the team sheet I immediately said to myself that that's us not keeping a clean sheet uh today and that's exactly what happened um and still no Toby it was sort of Weirdly not in the squad last week, despite, you know, being showed that he was in training. And then Jose said that they weren't training. Don't have a clue about that. Uh, and still don't have a clue about it. Um, uh, and to be honest, the first half was quite tame in general. It, it was quite a bit of a boring sort of stalemate of a half until it sort of kicked into gear in, with the disallow goal thing. Um I want to touch on some of the Sky Pundits things about what they've said about this later in the video because I did note something down um, in, that happened in the second half. But my opinion on the goal, I don't think it was a foul. It's one of these things that is just the modern era of football now. Like That's not a foul. And man, you should have been 1-0 up. It's, it wasn't a foul. Um, but this is what happens now with the VAR and... and rules that fans, pundits, sometimes referees just don't understand. Um, but I, I fully agree with Man United fans on that one. It should have been 1-0. 1-0 to them. And I, I thought it was... Yeah, like I, I never want to see my own players like rolling around and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it just... It wasn't it wasn't a good look for Sonny. But, um, yeah, I, I don't agree with the decision. I, I thought it was a, a terrible decision. Um, and then, in typical Spurs fashion, they went and scored um, somehow. Um, I think it was uh, Kane fed Lucas through, who looked like he was going to score, uh, shoot straight like uh, first time, and then picked out Sonny on the on the far side, and he slotted it in, which is good to see him get on the score sheet. Um, I think Sonny's performances in the last three, four weeks, I know he had his injury as well, um, but even before he got injured, have been sort of below par of what he's shown earlier in the season. Um, but it was good to see him get on the score sheet. Um, and that was kind of it for the first half. A bit of a bit of a weird one. Uh, second half, I wrote down straight away, we're inviting the pressure and we will inevitably concede. And then I wrote down underneath that, we inevitably conceded. Because that is just what you come to expect when you go 1-0 up with Spurs at the minute this season under Jose Mourinho is that you, you get your lead and you don't try and capitalise on it. You just sit on it and hope for the best. Um, and that's what happened. And then inevitably, like I said, we conceded. Defensively, we just so open. I, I thought there was vibes in this match of almost like a pre-season game where no one's really like Premier League week in, week out sharp, like defensively and aware, like their awareness of where the ball is and players around them and things. So it just looked like a pre-season game. They weren't really like tracking anybody. Um, I think it's Regulon, look, he's a cracking young player. He really is. He's, you know, in going forward is, is really good. And I think it's, it's always good to have, you know, defenders who can, who can get back and, and go forward at the same time. Well, not at the same time, obviously, but, um, you know, we haven't really had anything like that since, uh, Danny Rose and Kyle Walker, you know, they were brilliant in terms of, um, you know, they, they had the speed to 
get forward and cause defence problems on the other team, but also get back and help us defensively. Regulon, I feel, is more attuned to going forward than back. Um, and I've just wrote down he needs to improve defensively. I thought today really exposed him defensively. Um, so much open space for United on, on their right-hand side. Um, and just and even for their, their second goal, like it was done so easily. Um, and it's just like, it's just embarrassing. It's like, you know, it's, it's good to be able to get forward, but, it, you know, you've got to defend. You, you are a left back and you might be a left wing back, but you're still in the defence and you need to defend. And you're just as guilty as the rest of our defence this season, not good enough. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I spoke about it earlier in the video about Sky's coverage. Um, I'll get onto some of the Kane comments and things anyway later, but um, I noticed in half time that they were talking about the incident. Of course, it's an incident and it's their job to evaluate it. Um, and, you know, you've got Roy Keane, obviously very outspoken, coming out saying, Son, it, it's embarrassing and stuff. And like I said, I've, I've told you guys my opinion. I thought that the that it should have been a goal and I don't want to see my players reacting like that and they shouldn't and it is embarrassing. But I noticed during this match, especially in the second half, that Bruno Fernandes, who has got a bit of a reputation for also going down quite easily, um, has, you know, I think there was an incident where Hoybier ran past him and maybe the slightest touch, his heel caught Hoybier's shin as they just sort of ran past each other. And then there was about a three second delay and then Fernandez went down as Spurs were sort of going forward and then we booted the ball out. And I, I sort of looked at that and he was he was rolling around on the floor, all this, this and that. And then as soon as we put the ball out, standard cliche thing, every team has these players that does this. Um, as soon as we put the ball out, oh, he's straight back up. You know, he's absolutely fine. And it was just a bit like, I sort of looked at that. I went, that's just as embarrassing as the sun, you know, the sun incident. But it won't get talked about it won't get commented on um and it kind of like i said it kind of just really sort of just made me think about like the kane comments and stuff about kane's future obviously there's been some reports come out this week about him one maybe wanting to leave in the summer um if spurs qualify for champions league i think he's gone anyway but um and i just sort of i got this like feeling with all the kane comments and things like even martin tyler during the during the match, was he, they literally were talking about Edison Cavani um, and his contract situation at Man United. And then all of a sudden, Martin Tyler goes, and how would you... Uh, and Gary Neville went, how would you replace that? And then Martin Tyler just went, well, Harry Kane or Haaland. And it's like, well, just, you know, just... Sat, it's just like, come on, guys. So, like, it's, it's exactly the same as the Bale... Th when, ba when we saw Bale to Real Madrid... There was so much like selling him like in the media and everything, and it was just kind of like, oh come on. Um, so that was a bit frustrating to sort of hear, but yeah, I, on the Fernandez thing, I was just like, it's just not going to get spoke about, and it's just the way it is. But um, uh, and like I said, Regulon, um, back to the match. Regulon, I just thought was just done too easy on on United's second goal. I think Fernandez um, nutmegged him, and, and it just again it comes down to defensive awareness. He was done too easily, and between Dyer and Aurier, like they just weren't tracking Cavani. And it wasn't the first time it happened. Dyer really struggled with uh, Cavani today. I think Roden had a bit of a, you know, he's probably the best out of the four, but he struggled as well with um, Cavani at times. But it was just basic, just awareness. There was no like outstanding mistakes but it it sort of just it just sort of comes down to just basic um like i said basic defensive awareness knowing your surroundings those around you you know you know if they're whipping if man you're going to whip the ball in it's going to be towards edison cavani ready to header it in or tap it in you know it's just i don't know it seems pretty simple to me but i'm not a manager um and then oh and the second goal 75th minute the 77th minute Again, Spurs conceding again in the last 15 minutes of the game. And it's been the reoccurring theme throughout the season. And God knows where Tottenham would be if 
they had shored up the defence in that last 15 minutes. I think they've I think they've conceded the most goals this season in the last 15 minutes. Well, they've, they've, I think before today they dropped 11 points from doing that, which is mental when you think about it. Um, it's, it's mental to think where they'd be if they'd not done that. Um, and then, literally, I, I was watching the game during injury time and I, I said to myself, and Gary Neville said it as well, there's just no urgency. There was no urgency. Spurs were the ones chasing the game. 2-1 down, six minutes of injury time added on. And they were not chasing the game. Like chasing the game. They weren't showing any urgency at all. They were just acting all nonchalant, like not even like running for a ball that's gone out for a throw. They weren't running for it or anything. And then it just got summed up. Man U went and scored a third goal. Defence, again, nowhere to be seen. Regulon on the left side, like sh- giving Greenwood so much space. And it's just summed it all up again and again. Every single time I seem to be coming on these videos and saying it's the same old mistakes, so same old lack of attitude, lack of ambition. Um, and it goes through the club. It, it does. It goes through the play. It goes from the players, the manager, and Daniel Levy up top. You know, everyone's guilty of it. And and I don't know where we'll be in the summer. I said in my last video maybe a change of management in the summer. I don't see the point of getting rid of. Um, Mourinho now um, despite how many fans probably want that to happen um, and trust me the football is as depressing as it is to watch makes me feel like I want Mourinho to go you know at times but logically there's no point in getting rid of him this late into the season because it's it's just not and I can't see it happening either I, it will not happen for the contract payoff that, that Levy would have to do it's just not going to happen. Um, I don't know what will happen in the summer. I just think it would be smarter to give a new manager a whole summer to build a team and have that pre-season with them instead of bringing them in to salvage with, what, 10 games left, 8 games, 9 games left. So, um, it, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a bit of a dodgy one, really. But as well with Levy, as well, going into summer, like... I'm sort of looking at it going, we need to do something. You know, you've got Harry Kane probably leaving. Um, you know, it's it's hard. And, and even if Kane doesn't leave, if Levy keeps Kane, doesn't sell him, and look, it's going to be difficult. You know, I think um, it's going to be a hefty fee. And I don't know if there's going to be many clubs that can afford that. Um, obviously during the pandemic and then if Kane asks to leave and Levy doesn't let him what's that going to do for next season what's, what situation are we going to be in then so it's going to be a very interesting summer um, I'm now at the stage which I always find myself at where I just can't wait for the season to end um, do I think Spurs are going to get Champions League no um, they're six points we're six points off fourth at the minute Um West Ham beat Leicester earlier. So Leicester are now being dragged towards like the fourth place sort of fight because I think there's a point between them and West Ham and then obviously Chelsea are, are up there as well with Liverpool. Spurs, if they are to challenge, are clinging on by a thread. Um, but I don't think they will. I don't think they will. They're not, they're not showing anything at all. No fight, no spirit, no, like I said earlier, ambition to, to do this. You know, there's no willingness from this team at all and... I, I can't even blame Kane for wanting to go. I, I'd want to go at this point. Like He's not seeing anything um, in terms of ambition for this club going forward. And I, I to be honest, I don't even think Carabao Cup win would be enough. I really don't. Everyone's saying it it hinges on that and stuff. But I'm just kind of like, you know, it's for me, it's not um, not enough to keep him. I think the club has shown a severe lack of ambition this season in terms of like where they've shown they could be and how far they've dropped. They were atop of the league for five, six weeks, I think, at the, towards the start of the season. Um, certainly around sort of September to Christmas time they were. And it, they've just dropped like a rock. And, and it will, will be funny for rival fans. I'm sure it will be. You know, we all... We all like to see the rival teams lose and things like that. But uh, I, like I said, I'm just kind of past the point where I'm, I'm starting to just... 
I don't know. It's uh, like I said, it's you're just sort of turning the TV on now, expecting these performances, and then you're shocked when they actually turn up and and blow a team away or or just you know play their hearts out. That's actually more surprising now, and that's quite sad to say. So. Um, I'll leave it there. I think we are in action next this Friday coming up against Everton. Uh, Friday night kickoff might be the first one this season. I think I'm not sure, but um, Spurs will have to be on it again. Like I, I don't, you know, I'm not holding out much hope. I think I think it'll be. It's an important game that is Everton are two points behind us with two games in hand. Um, that's a big game. Spurs really need to win that one. But like I said, they need to win the last the last eight games that we've got to play. Can't see it happening. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, I'll leave it there. I'm really sorry for my pessimistic attitude. But you just watch this week after week and it's the same, same old crap every single week. Now, even Kane was poor today. At least he sort of looked semi-like he wanted to try. I thought Sonny was poor. Um... Hoybier just struggled, and on Mele sort of tried but struggled. No standout performance at all. You know, Loris probably was because he made a couple of really good saves, but like I said, you're trying to stand out amongst this lot. It's not really that hard, is it? Um, so I will see you guys in the next video. Please hit the subscribe button. I reached 20 subscribers this week, it was just a bit of a milestone. I'm, yeah, I'm quite proud of that. So I will see you guys in the next video, and as always, for some reason, Come on, you first.